Fast moving targets live from uh, Eurosonic Noorderslag in Groningen. Two days Buma me music meets uh, tech. Uh, another guest, hi, uh, who are you and uh, what are you doing? Well, good afternoon, Erwin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Dennis Duland and uh, I'm, uh, I just had a keynote speech about uh, the future of music intelligence. And um, um, uh, when, shall we start at the present? What, what is music intelligence? Well, that's a great question, actually. When somebody asked me 20 years ago, what are you doing today? Yeah. Now I'm probably busy with music intelligence. What is music intel intelligence? Yeah, well, that is fan behavior, for example. How many times do we visit a website of an artist? Or how many times do we use an app for, or from an artist or, 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 an, or a festival? Or which music service do we use? This, this, this is all kind of, of intelligence we can, uh, we can use. Yeah, well, I would uh, say that is, uh, that is data. And on top of that, the intelligence uh, should come. Because data in itself is nothing. It's just, no, it's just information. And when you don't get the right context out of it, yeah, then you don't have the right intelligence. Yeah. yeah. So can you give me an example? Where, where and how does it, does it work? And, and, and what can an artist or a label uh, uh, or a festival do with it? Well, you can optimize, for example, sales processes or marketing processes or even communication processes. In my speech, which I just had, actually, I was saying like, you know, a lot of the times when I'm, I'm visiting companies uh, which are, are working with artists, for example, yeah, they send a newsletter. We all know newsletters in this, this, this internet age. And what they send, you know, they send in the same newsletter to all the, all the others they have, like, you know, this is the YouTube link, this is the Spotify link, this is the SoundCloud link, this is the whatever music service you use, you know. And that's irrelevant, actually, because you already can knew, know which music service is, is your fan you're using. So you can segment yeah, your newsletter, saying like, oh, these are the YouTube uh, uh, viewers and listeners. I send only the YouTube link because they don't want to have the Spotify link or I don't, they don't want to even have the SoundCloud link, for example. Mm -hmm. These are small, kind steps, you know? Yeah. Hey, um, uh, uh, this this um, uh, uh, event, this part of the event, uh, music uh, uh, and tech, can music at the moment do without tech? Well, you know, the, the, the first question I ask to the, to the audience, like, uh, who thinks uh, uh, we are in the music or entertainment industry? Well, a lot of people raised their hands, actually. <laughs> well, I said, okay, at my, at my last slide, actually, we are in a tech business, you know, and music is oil in, this, in the business we, we are, you know. So we are disguised as tech companies. Because, because we, have, we have to maintain a relationship with the fans, and that's, that's based on information. The same way, actually, Facebook or Twitter or whatever your network is doing that. But uh, do people like that here? Because they are in, the, uh, not the, they're in the, the passion business. They're in, uh, that, that's what music is, uh, is about, and not tech. Well, yeah, that, of course, I, I, you know, I have a passion for music and it all starts with music, with great content, uh, you know, you, 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 you can't do nothing without great content. However, when you want to make the difference to, you know, you're in a competing, challenging business. I just gave the example saying like, you know, DJs, yeah, there are 29,615 DJs registered at the moment at topdjs.net, <laughs> which means, you know, when you're playing in the top 20, you have 29,000 <laughs> competitors when you want to stay on top. You have to maintain the relationship with your fans, which, which you have. When you lose that, you're fucked. Hey, why, how does it come that the, the dance industry seems to be uh, doing better or understand better uh, uh, the world of digital than other fields of music? It's about the audience, you know. The, the, the audience of the dance industry, they are millennials, you know. They're born after 1992 or something. So they are raised with the internet. So they are demanding, yeah, the, the, you know, the, 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 of the organizations or even of the artists saying, like, the, the way I want to connect with you is digital. So the, the group of people is determining, actually, you know, the industry. Yeah? And the dance industry happened to be an industry for young people. Hey, uh, if, uh, if I ask you what is the most important trend happening right now, what do you say? Well, the most important trend happening is, it, it, when you look at, at my, in my side, is, is, is really to get the right context out of the data. 
you know, you're already seeing like, you know, management companies transforming into tech companies which are busy with business intelligence systems to maintain the relationships with their fans. When you're not doing that, actually, without proper intelligence, you will die. So this is, this is the trend going on. And, 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 uh, and, and is there a lot to win? How good, are, how, how good is this business uh, in this, uh, with this intelligence? We're just in this infancy stage at the, at the moment, you know. We're just used, yeah, what I said, like, in the dance business, we only use uh, uh, music, digital music services right now. 90% or 95% of the music consumption comes out of streaming services. So this is, you know, five years ago we had we had presentations over here saying like, oh, uh, we're still selling CDs, there's iTunes, and yeah, the streaming music services are coming up. You know, now five days later, or five years later, 90%, 95% is coming out of the, the music services. So it's a complete digital business. Yeah. Hey, and um, uh, in the rest of the music, we had uh, the, the, the revival of the uh, of, of vinyl, for example. So, will we ever see the revival of the download? No, we won't see the revival of the download. You know, we have devices in our pockets, or even you know, we we're getting devices in our home, uh, like refrigerators or even washing machines with screens. And we expect, as people, when we touch the screen, yeah, and we want to consume entertainment content. It's there. We don't care about how it's stored or, or distributed or whatever. We expect it's there. So the access to content, this is, this, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know uh, uh, broad the, 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 the world of music. So you know the dance uh, world very well and you know uh, other fields uh, very well as well. In the other fields, so to say, I still see, I see a lot of uh, artists uh, complaining about uh, the money they get through um, streaming services. I never hear uh, the dance world uh, complaining uh, about that. No, I can, can understand, you know, well, to be honest, you know, the, the other fields, you know, the other genres within the music industry, they're always complaining, you know, to be honest. You know. I don't know why I'm in the, in the music industry for almost 25 years and each, each year I hear the same other genres complaining. You know, it's a bit entrepreneurial thing. The dance guys, you know, they are entrepreneurs and it doesn't matter, you know, they were not subsidized, you know, in the beginning days or whatever. The whole music industry in Holland was, in, before we uh, get rid of the, the, the subsidiaries, and actually, you know, we were subsidized and it, so the money came in from different sources. Now it's gone, so they have to be entrepreneurial and that's, you know, why they are complaining. And it means not getting your music onto, ups, uh, on, uh, uploaded to Spotify, no. It, it, mean, it means that you have to create connections with people who want to consume your music. Yeah, and that's quite a hard, uh, quite hard thing to do. And that's what I, they are complaining, but they have to be entrepreneurial. Hey, um, is, is, uh, um, which part of the music industry still needs disruption, uh, according to you? Which part of this industry needs dis disruption? Yeah. Well, you know, we, I think we are in the third phase of disruption, you know. First, we, 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 we got from analog to digital, which meant, you know, uh, uh, music was available at piracy uh, uh, networks, you know. Then, you know, the legal networks came, like uh, downloads, like iTunes. And the third phase now is streaming services. So, yeah, I don't know exactly what's the, what's the fourth part. We, have already had, we already had three parts, you know, so... And it's going to be, yeah, virtual reality, whatever. Who, say, who, who will say? You know, I don't know. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot because you're a busy man. You have yep. to, you have to go on to other things. Uh, thanks a lot um, again. I must say because, of course, you're a regular, uh, a regular guest at our Fast Moving Targets uh, program. So we'll see you again uh, in the near future, I'm sure. And uh, thanks a lot for now. Thank you, Erwin. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, uh, you. Thanks for watching now. If you're watching live, and then you know that we will be here for two days, so you can watch two days of interviews and pictures, etc. Uh, over here. If you watch on demand uh, via FastMovingTargets.nl or YouTube, you know. You've got a, we've got a whole archive of interesting uh, uh, talks, not only of those days, but we've been here, for example, a couple of years ago as well and talked to all the Spotify's and YouTubes of this world, uh, YouTubes of this world. So uh, watch it and see if what they said then still holds up now. Thanks a lot.